Hello and welcome to TechWatch, the EdTech video news program produced by eSchool News. I'm Dennis Pierce. The Consortium for School Networking has a program to encourage and support the use of information to make sound educational decisions. Recently, eSchool News sat down with consultant Karen Greenwood Henke to discuss how COSIN's data-driven decision-making initiative helps school leaders learn to use data to improve teaching and learning. eSchool News Associate Editor Laura Devaney has more. For the past four years, COSIN has helped educators use data to improve instruction through its data-driven decision-making initiative. Consultant Karen Greenwood Henke recently discussed the project with eSchool News. The COSIN Data-Driven Decision-Making Initiative was started about four years ago in 2003 and our goal is really to help bring together the best practices and the best ideas for using data within school organizations to improve uh, teaching and learning and uh, create a place where everyone can go to find out more information and share best practices. Henke explained why data-driven decision-making is important for schools. Schools have always collected a lot of data and a lot of information. Uh, what they've done with it is often put it into file cabinets or send it on to, uh, you know, from the school they send it to the district, from the district they send it to the state or to the federal government. Uh, but what we're really asking schools to do with data-driven decision-making is bring that all that information they've gathered back down to the school and to the classroom, to the teacher and even to the student to give them the information that they need to succeed. Because we recognize that data gives you a much more objective way of understanding and measuring how you're doing. It also gives you information about what, different, what things you could do differently to make a difference. Um, it's really about the process of making better choices based on appropriate analysis and relevant information. This concept is even more important in the era of no child left behind, she said. Schools are being held accountable. They're being asked to show that every school is uh, every student is meeting certain criteria and meeting the standards and making progress. And in order to make that progress, you can't just measure student, student achievement at the end of the year and hope they made the progress. You really have to start putting information in, g gathering information throughout the year and feeding that back to the teacher and the student and the principal so that they can adjust their lesson plans, adjust their instructional me methods, even in some cases adjusting, adjusting bus schedules so that students are getting to class on time. There's a lot more than just test scores that go into data-driven decision making. A significant challenge in using data to drive instruction is getting a school's various data systems to talk to each other, Henke said. Like I said before, districts have a, a lot of data from student test scores to student attendance to uh, information about teachers um, to information about facilities and, and classrooms. And so you have to take all those silos of data and figure out a way to make that communicate with each other. Um, once you've done that, which is a huge step in the process, the next step is really the analysis of that information. How do you query it? How do you create a system so that you can easily ask questions of it? One key to success is recognizing that data-driven decision-making isn't just a one-time occurrence. You aren't going to be able to suddenly uh, raise all of your test scores because uh, you've implemented one aspect of data-driven decision-making. It's really about continuous improvement. COSIN's data-driven decision-making website has case studies of how districts of all sizes have implemented this practice with success. School leaders can also use a self-assessment tool to find out how well prepared they are to put data-driven decision-making into practice in their own institutions. And most school districts are getting to the collecting the data part. They're very good at that. But the analysis part is the next step and then the actual ability to act on that data and act on that analysis is really the big challenge here. For eSchool News, I'm Laura Devaney. ESN TV, your number one source for video news and information from North America's leading EdTech publications, from the world's foremost EdTech website, the eSchool News Network, America's EdTech Authority. Watch ESN TV 
encounter the field's most fascinating personalities, the innovators who are turning the old school into the e-school. Watch ESN TV. Meet notable educators, advocates, and leaders. Watch ESN TV. Get real-time coverage of EdTech's most important gatherings. Stay up to the minute. Get the EdTech news and information you need to succeed. Watch eSchool News TV.